Hello, welcome to another episode of This, That, and the Other. Like I was mentioning in my last show, I started a new page of Memories of Northern Virginia. I, I changed the name to Northern Virginia Memories in hopes that more people typing in Northern Virginia will, will run across it. Basically, this um, page, like I was saying, is focusing on a broader area of Northern Virginia, um, D.C. border all the way to Fredericksburg. And one, one of the things I want to accomplish from this page is to find you know, out the history of abandoned houses, abandoned buildings that I pass by quite frequently. I'm, I'm taking pictures and I'm featuring the question, who knows the story? I, I myself do not know the story. That's, um, that's my reason for putting who knows the story. Hopefully somebody come forward and uh, have some information on what the story is on some of these places. All right, that being said, today I'm going to be talking about something that existed back when I, I was a kid, back in the 1960s, and um, is still um, obscurely in existence. I, I guess, I don't know if obscure is the right word, word for it, but it def definitely doesn't have the popularity that it had back when, back when I was a kid. What I'm talking about is trading stamps. Um, I was looking at a, one of the Huntsville Facebook pages, Huntsville, um, one, one of the, there's two of them, I can't remember which, which one it was, but, but somebody featured a picture of top value stamps. And I, yes, I, I remember those from when we lived in Huntsville. My mother used to get them at the grocery store and purchasing groceries and put them in a book and redeem them for various items in catalogs or go to the you know, store and buy them. But I remember those stamps being in existence in Huntsville. They were, that's the big one was S&H Green Stamps. You get those at Winn-Dixie. Um, top value, I believe, were available at Kroger, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, plaid stamps were the, um, the orange colored stamps. The S&H Green Stamps were green and top value were yellow. The um, orange plaid stamps were available at A&P, and then we lived from 1968 or 69-70. We lived in the St. Louis area, and they had eagle stamps. They, um, those are another another trading stamp, and, and then there were there are various others th throughout the country. But um, S and H green stamps were originally called green shield stamps, and they were at the at their peak from the 1930s to the late 1980s. Uh, they started in 1896, a rewards program by Sperry and Hutchinson, that's what um, s and stood for, were founded by Thomas S. Sperry and Shelley Byron Hutchinson in 1896. In 1960s, the rewards publication in the U.S., um, it was the largest publication in the U.S., as a matter of fact, there rewards books and they manufactured three times as many stamps as the United States Postal Service did. Customers received the stamps at grocery stores, department stores, gas stations, and other retailers and could be redeemed for products in the catalog. I, remember, I um, saw in a catalog or in a, in a magazine I was reading some, some guy actually won a prize of a million s and green stamps. A million of those could be redeemed for a I think a 67 Mustang, a Mustang around that period. Guys say he got his Mustang that way. Competitors of, of Green Stamp were Gold Bell of the Midwest, Triple S, those who sold at Grand Union <coughs> grocery stores. I remember those being around in the uh, DC area and uh, East Coast chains, maybe some around, I don't know. There was Gold Bond, Blue Chip, Plaid, a and yep, remember those, Top Value, and Eagle from the May Company in St. Louis, and also the Cleveland area as well. The books had 24 pages, and 50 points filled a page. The stores bought from s and to give, and gave to customers as bonus, in, and the stamps came in 10, one, actually one, 10, and 50 points stamp, stamps. Um, each book contained 1,200 points that could be redeemed from any in any um, s &H store or ordered from their catalog. Some merchants gave out more stamps per dollar spent, so obviously more customers would, would go to that 
particular merchant because they gave out more trade and stamp for that purchase. In the 1960s, pink stamp were introduced to the UK. A series of recessions during the 1970s decreased sales and value of the rewards declined substantially. People had to um, buy more 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 um, more item, items to get more stamps, and more stamps had to be um, accumulated to um, to buy merchandise. And people saw it as and the rewards declined substantially. People just saw it as not being worth the trouble anymore. SNH was sold by successors and the successors in 1981. In 1999, it was purchased from a holding firm by a member of the founding Sperry family. By then, only 100 stores were offering them. After the advent of the internet, the company modified its practices and offered green points as reward for online purposes, purchases and could be redeemed at only a few stores like Freshtown in New York State. By 2013, it was purchased by Anthony Zalezi, I'm sorry, um, with the vision to reboot it. He wants to continue the practice of collecting stamps and redeeming rewards in a modern way. He hopes to have a new program by Earth Day in 2015. And yes, I remember the those stamps from we lived in Huntsville, and we uh, we left out Huntsville for moved overseas in 1971. I remember in Okinawa. When a store had some trading stamps, and I bought something in, in a store, and I, uh, the woman gives me these trading stamps, and I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do with them, so I gave them, to, I gave them to an open aisle lady in the store. I just like, would you like to have these? Because I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what their program was or anything. Or this kid wasn't really, really that interested in it in the first place. But uh, we came back to the United States in 1976 to the um, Northern Virginia. I don't really remember my mother having much of an interest in the um, stamps. I don't re really remember them still being available. I mean, when we came back, the um, grocery store chains mainly were in Northern Virginia were um, Giant and Safeway. I, I don't remember them offering anything like that. They, they may have but at that time, but I, I, don't, I don't recall. There was, there was an A&P across from where Giant and Safeway were also. I, I remember A and P having bingo, and you could win, you could win money, and we'd always find four of them. But there'd be like a fifth one that would always, I guess they you know manufactured only a few of those to made it more more difficult to win. I think like the biggest amount you win like maybe like five thousand something like that. It's, it's been it's been quite a while since you know we used to used to get those things, but yeah I didn't really didn't think too a whole lot of, about the train stamps until i saw that picture and it brought back memories i don't i don't have any actual stamps to show you what what they look like but you you can see it on the internet and with wikipedia and i just thought i would go ahead and discuss this one another another piece of uh, history and as always thanks for watching